And three, and two, and one. It's Sunday, December 22nd, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that would make me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Vintage Sherman Length, episode number 536. And we have some guests with us. We have Mario and Kenny. Hey. Yay! We should do this. <laughs> okay, so today we, we have a built-in audience, <laughs> or they're some canned, effect, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's one of the, it's another one of those episodes which actually we've been doing a little bit more frequently lately. Um, but it's one of these. Let's talk about sex. Gary, can you clarify? So, uh, in the much anticipated, long awaited, and hopefully not duplicated, Filled topic with antis- is patient. Um, so, let's talk about sex. The series has come back, and we were going to have our two lovely guests on, but then there was testicular difficulties, and somebody at computer died. <clears throat> so... <laughs> Wow. But here we are. Well, you can't plan that kind of a thing. So. Oh, you can't. So instead of a week before World AIDS Day, just in time for the big jolly man with a sack that everybody wants to get into, it's time that we talk about prep. So our guests are Mario Forte and Kenny Kiavakani. Yes. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Notice, I didn't, myself. Notice I didn't try to say that. I know. I asked ahead of time. I cheated. I want to make sure. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, so we have these two fine gentlemen with us uh, who are in another state because that's how we do things around here. A little bit of backstory. We've wanted to talk about uh, prep and as a topic, but instead of kind of like shooting from the hip, we wanted to bring some people on that had like some professional uh, background in reference to it, you know, speak to it more uh in a way so <laughs> he points as kenny points to mario well you know <laughs> so i reached out on a facebook group uh that i have been with a couple of years now and was like hey gotta do a little podcast for the lgbtq community focused on the, uh towards bears does anybody know anybody who might be a good guest to have on and then all these people's names were blah, 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 like coming up in the chat and in amongst them was mr mario um, so then I went and like checked out his profile and I found out that he goes by prep daddy and that he has connections with the bear community and he's been to North American bear. Uh, so Damon and I probably saw him there. We might have even like cruised him and not even realized it. <laughs> Neither would I. <laughs> <laughs> Straight over my head. So, and, uh, it cannot go without saying in the the history of what has been Cubs Out Loud, yet again, we have a title holder in our presence. We are so proud that Kenny, a.k.a. Panda, Mr. North America Bear 2018 is with us. So. Yay! Yay! So we've had other former uh, Mr. NAB's uh, title holders of varying kinds on. You may happen to know of one by the name of a certain Ray who went on to win... Uh, boot black title and has done drag and things of that nature. He's been on several times as well. And Adam, of course, the illustrious producer of NAB and World Bear Weekend has been on as well. You probably know Paul Lanner. Now I'm just like gushing and making all these like references. So <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you dropped it's the not going to get you red strip. Oh, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> he said it's not going to get you free registration. 
Well, yeah, I know. He's kind of shady like that. But that's okay, because Adam's been to my event, so, you know. Well, there we're, we go. We're, we're those weird bear sisters that put on events, so. He does his, I do mine. We're okay. But that being said, uh, why don't we get a little bit of an intro and background before we get into the discussion with our two guests here. Whichever you would like to go first about um, where, kind of like, who, what, where, when that uh, you got involved and what your current activities are involved with the whatever communities, bear, leather, kink, nudist, HIV, you know. Um, so I'll go first. Uh, my name is Kenny Alika Kiavakani. I was born in Hawaii on Maui. Um, I lived up north for a few years before I decided to move down here. Uh, when I moved down here, um, I found the Lookout Bears, which is here in Chattanooga. And I met Mario through that. Um, as far as other backgrounds, um, I am a title holder for Mr. North American Bear 2018 and also uh, Mr. Bear Bus 2018 out of Orlando, Florida. Um, I'm a surveyor on the side. I actually also work for Mario. Mario is a, um, a land surveyor and, and drawer, and I'm just go out in the field and I do his bidding. <laughs> <laughs> is that you cutting line or, or, or I do the whip? Yeah. Well, that kind of sounds like a fun daddy, DS relationship. We don't call him daddy for nothing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, other than that, um, I do land surveying during the day. I also I choreograph and I teach dance. Um, I teach at a high school for a show choir program and a theater program and a couple dance studios. I perform around Chattanooga with a group called The Pop-Up Project. Um, they do a lot of amazing um, things around town at museums and on block parties. I just had a rehearsal today for a, a New Year's gig. Um, it's a block party and it's going to be pretty awesome. It's at the Westin in Chattanooga. I'm pretty excited about that. I um, also just recently got engaged to my partner, Jesse Hulse. Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm on, uh, on Halloween. And uh, we plan on getting uh, having a little wedding ceremony at North American Bear this year. Aww. Is Coco Peru going to be the officiator? I wish. No. <laughs> I don't got that much oh money. My <laughs> also, our viewing and listening audience that does not know, Coco Peru is the headlining entertainer for North American Bear. It's coming up in February. So, Was that a dig at your salary? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, one of, one of the things that is – is fortunate about me having my own business besides the the work I do with prep which is also a job that I have it's it's actually uh, I'm, I'm a professional paid professional in that in that industry but uh, so I've had my own business for 25 years as a land surveyor and um, one of the one of the benefits of that is that I can allow Kenny to uh, head up our uh, MSM task force, which stands for Men Who Have Sexual Men Task Force, from our community planning group. So that's how Kenny's gotten involved with the uh, HIV prevention work that we do. And um, I've been on the council for well over 15 years. Um, and uh, going, being involved in that council um, has allowed me to go to conferences and learn as much as I could about PrEP back in 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. So uh, my history with PrEP goes back to that point when um, I got information about this and nobody was talking about it. And it was like, how, how can we have this game changer and there's just no information. So I came up with PrEP Daddy. I came up with um, um, this social media campaign to try and educate people. And for the most part, I've used the hookup apps, Growler, Scruff, Grinder, Adam for Adam. I've used uh, those hookup apps and Jacked to uh, to do my outreach work for years until I was uh, hired by uh, an agency in town here called Santa Community Care to be their prep navigator. So I've been doing that for over three years with them. But I was doing prep navigation work long before I was even associated with the agency because there was a need in the community. So that's kind of our history. Uh, we do a lot of work together. We do special events like World AIDS Day just happened. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort and energy into those uh, programs. Um, uh, we've got Black Awareness Day coming up on February 7th. 
So there's going to be some um, there's going to be some things coming up on that too. But uh, that's the involvement that we have in our community. Cool. So you sound educated and certified. So we're not just you know bringing on some who this. Uh, oh my God, Gary! <laughs> I'm being silly. I'm super excited, and and Damon, you probably know, and Jeff as well. Like I've wanted to do this topic for a long time, but I, I would seriously, I wanted to have people on that like could speak from like what they've mm-hmm. been doing in terms of advocacy and education, and have it not necessarily be just us and our experiences. So thanks Fair. for coming on. Uh, so let's start with the basics. Uh, what is PrEP? So PrEP being a, uh, let me get this right. Is it an abbreviation or an acronym? It's an acronym. Right. Um, so for those of you that don't know, actually, if you ever see it, it's not meant to look weird. Uh, so it's four letters, P-R-E-P. The R is usually lowercase because the PR in the beginning is pre, the E stands for exposure, and then P is prophylaxis, which is basically to say how to prevent something from happening uh, is the way to, to look at it. So the concept is that PrEP is used to prevent individuals from uh, becoming HIV uh, you know, converted. So It was probably chosen that way because PEP didn't sound right. Well, PEP, PEP actually, is actually the post exposure. Post exposure prophylaxis. So uh, that's there idea. is a PEP. <laughs> right. And, and we've sort of adopted PrEP in, the, in, in, in society right now. We've adopted it for HIV prevention, but there are other PrEPs. If you get a flu shot every year, that is a PrEP. It's a pre exposure for flu. If you get, mm. if you are a female and you take the birth control pill, that is a pre exposure to becoming pregnant. So there are many other preps. We just have sort of adopted that because of the history of HIV in, in our country um, that we've adopted that uh, prep for being HIV prevention. But there are other preps. Okay. Well, Makes already sense. then. I mean, it does. I didn't know that. So <laughs> everybody check yourselves out there. Prep isn't exclusive to the gays. We just adopted it like a lot of other things. That being said, <laughs> uh, most people probably think of uh, a blue pill, not that little blue pill, the other blue pill. Um, blue. When it comes to PrEP, you usually think of Truvada, which is the um, actual, uh, what do we want to call that? I call it the public name, but it's the manufacturer Gilead's Yes. Uh, Help me, Mario. What do we, what do we refer yeah. to? That so a... so Travada, Travada was developed in 2002. It came on the market in 2002 as a um, as an antiretroviral treatment, one part of the medicines for people who are living with HIV uh, to suppress the virus. And Gilead uh, did clinical trials in 2010 and 11 to see if it would work for people who are HIV positive. And in none of the clinical trials, or in all of the clinical trials, did no one become HIV positive. So in 2012, the FDA approved it for um, for pre-exposure prophylaxis for PrEP. So Travada has been out. The medicine has been out for a very long time. Um, the, there's a newer medicine, which I know you're going to talk about, has also been around a long time, too. Um, but it only recently got uh, approved by the FDA in October um, of this year for uh, use as a as an alternate to Travada, which is called now Discovy. Mm-hmm. We can talk about those if you like. Yeah, so most people probably think when they think of PrEP in the gay male community, you've probably heard of like all sorts of social media campaigns around PrEP, mm-hmm. um, you know, being PrEP, being PrEP aired, uh, being PrEP positive, like things along those lines where because, of course, mm-hmm. we've got to make everything a silly little pun or a rename. But the concept has been about taking the um, Truvada blue tablet. It's once daily. Uh, is the standard dosage and um, basically uh, prevents the virus itself from and you know becoming a factor within our immune systems and infecting an individual. Um, go ahead, you're gonna say something, David? No. Oh, okay. Um, and then Discovy came out uh, as an approval for this year. So, which um, before we get into the, I'll come circle back around to talking about the generic stuff, Mario. But basically, 
prep is, like you said, it's something that's been around for a while. And more importantly, like not that many people know about it, which we'll we'll talk more about like the dynamic of like gay males and versus the bear community and, and that type of awareness. But I think like we, we live in a bubble in terms of that awareness or the population reach, I guess. Right. There's uh, there's a lot of stigma surrounding HIV. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stigma in um, marginalized communities with regard to either being gay or being a person of color or uh, or having anything to do with with HIV or even HIV prevention. So overcoming those barriers are um, are key to getting the word out, really, um, that PrEP is out there. And it's not just for certain populations. It's for anyone who's sexually active. Yeah. Which, in my estimation, I'm always fighting for on our local county task forces for everybody. Like, I just, I, I yeah. my perspective has been ever since I first joined, and I've been like kind of fighting this fight because we have a, I won't get into it here, but we have issues with um, prescribers being available and education and awareness because we find most often that PCPs are like, oh well, I don't, I don't know anything about that. We don't, we don't talk about sex and we don't talk about prevention, and it's just like, <laughs> um. So, yeah, like to to have a conversation about it is one thing to make there, you know, be some awareness. But I kind of I'm very much I don't want to consider myself radical, but I pretty much just like I think everyone should just be prescribed it like a vitamin. You take it once a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, it would be great if no, that could be the thing. <laughs> there's no one easy path to access because everybody has different access to insurance or whether they have insurance access to a provider access to copays it's 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 a very individual process to get on prep and unfortunately that's the way it is i wish it was um i wish it was as easy as getting the birth control pill you know but it's unfortunately it's not that we mm -hmm. got this um, yeah. uh, this these barriers that are just preventing people from 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 getting hold of medicine and 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 being yeah. educated to take it yeah. Well, and so like Damon and I, we have different uh, experiences that I, I know from him and I having talks and Jeff, you might as well have um, some experience in terms of like Truvada and pursuing it to be prescribed it. Um, I'll talk about mine a little bit first because it's not very much to say. So I approached my PCP a couple years ago about it and basically came up against the Great Wall of China. It was like really silence. Oh, yeah. He didn't know anything about it. He had no clue what I was discussing. I sent him five links, you know, the CDC stuff, like Gilead, like all these things and crickets, nothing. And that was like right before I ended up joining the task force uh, over three years ago. And then come to find out my experience in my area is the experience. Like it's common all the time that your primary care doctor, your family doctor does not know boo about it. And mm. our medical system is not – I mean our medical system in the U.S. is very good but at the same time also got some serious issues. Yeah. And it's understandable that they can't keep up with everything. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, but if your patient comes to you with information, yeah, like wouldn't one kind of look it over and kind of understand some stuff about it? But in our region, what we find mostly is you get deferred to an infectious doctor mm -hmm. to – have it dealt with directly, which to me is frustrating as fuck because I'm like, yeah, okay, so you send them there, which kind of helps, but kind of also doesn't help because this isn't mm -hmm. like that's not you're not you don't have it. Right. You're you're trying to prevent yourself from getting it. It's it's become frustrating. So um I actually started on prep um through a online service, um, um new RX. Right, and right. essentially, you know, you know, you've seen the ads on Growler. If you have it, you'll probably get the ad every once in a while. Um, I had actually, um, it was around World A's Day in 28, no, yeah, 2018, sorry, 2018, that they were kind of promoting it and they had like, you know, $25 tests so you can get, you know, basically get it done and you get to test at home. And I was on it. I started it officially in January. There are some issues, um, uh, with regards to the testing, because they had so many that came in around that time that like all the testing had to be, you know, um, done and um, certified that you are negative. And so I went on it 
in January officially, and I was using it regularly until, and I'm funny, this is a funny story, until about July when um, my insurance shifted. Um, I changed insurances at work, and um, because of the change in insurances, I was, you know, getting it through my um Farm, they, they had my insurance has a pharmacy, separate pharmacy, pharmaceutical company that does all their um, prescription stuff. And I couldn't get get it through them. And when I went to get it again, there was a lot of just like back and forth about who because since I was going through new RX, I didn't have it from an actual doctor. Um, I did, but not really. So I didn't have the prescription and I found the prescription. I said I had to do all of these things just to kind of finally get it to a pharmacy to get it filled. And at that point in time, then the cost of it went up dramatically because I had um, changed over insurance and no longer had a different copay in my copay card. I was using a copay card through Gilead and that failed um, or there wasn't enough money on it. Um, through the help of our local um, HIV organization, Caracol, I've talked about them on the show before. Um, I am now back on PrEP, okay. or back on Juvada, and I'm actually, my doctor recently has talked to me about potentially bidding me on Discovy um, because according to her, um, it is not as damaging to the kidneys. So there's some issues with that and she's thinking that that might be a good idea for me. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's been harrowing. And one of the other issues, Ricardo, cause I, at the same time, while I was starting treating, I had the, if you've watched the podcast, I had the medical issue, diverticulitis. So I had to go and finally get a primary treating physician. Um, and it was very funny talking to, medical providers and mentioning that I'm on Truvada and them like, Truvada, what is that? Who is that? Like, and it, 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 it seemed odd to me because the same thing with Gary, like, I don't, I don't understand, like, especially now, like why people don't know what it is. Cause it's been out, you know, like you said, it's been out for several years. So, so my, my experience was I, 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 in 2014, when I learned when I learned that uh, there were no providers in my in South, in South, Southeast Tennessee at all, um, I went to my provider and I did the same thing as what Gary did. I, I did some education with my provider. Fortunately for me, my provider had done work in the 80s in San Francisco when the AIDS epidemic. She was in the she was in the Navy and she was a, an infectious disease doctor with the Navy. So she mm-hmm. at least had some competency with it and she was willing to give it a shot. So I. What I did in 2014 was I went out and I went out to the community and I found out what what doctors were first of all LGBT friendly that would prescribe a script um, mm-hmm. and went went from there. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages of going to a PCP. So if you go to your doctor and ask for prep, you may get the results that Gary had or or you may have had, where you they just don't know a whole lot about it. And even if they do write the script, you're still left on your own to make sure that you could fill it. And then six months down the line, when the Gilead copay runs out, what happens when you get charged 400 bucks, 500 bucks for the pill? So back in 2014, 2015, um, I worked with the Tennessee Department of Health on their advisory committee uh, for to develop a program for the state of Tennessee. And what we came up with was uh, a prep navigations program. So we were one of the first states to do prep navigators. And I became a prep navigator back then. And what that means is that if, if, if you are on your own with a script and you can't fill it for whatever reason, if you have to pay any money for, for it or, or you have barriers with that, if you can get in touch with a prep navigator, the navigator can help you through that system mm-hmm. and help find other copay assistance or other ways or, of managing it. Gilead yeah. has assured us, being the, the, the people in HIV prevention and, and the country, that if anyone has issues getting the medicine, they will work with them. But you have to know how to call or what numbers to call. And it's very difficult for people in the community to know all that. It's easier for them to yeah. have a navigator on hand that can do all that work for them. The other, pers- the other type that you can go to is go to a, an, an agency that is specific for prescribing PrEP, which typically are uh, uh, agencies that were taking care of of people living with 
it, uh, with HIV, uh-huh. but now yeah. have expanded to STI clinics and PrEP clinics. And yeah. you know, they are the experts and they can help you through the process. Um, so that's kind of where we've evolved is that a lot of private doctors and stuff like that would prefer that you, it's not that they don't want to prescribe or that they're giving you medicine for something you're not sick from because the information's out there. It's just that they don't want calls from, from you saying, oh, I've got, I've got the script, but they want 600 bucks for it. They, the, the PCPs don't want those calls. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. it, it is actually sort of better. I mean, I'm all for you using your PCP because your PCP is taking care of your overall health. Like what you were saying with the diver, diverticulitis, I had the same mm. issue. So I had to stop taking PrEP when I had my gallbladder out and then start back up again and stuff like that. So those are issues that a PCP needs to know about. And certainly the internal doctor, the internal medicine doctor that's going to be working on you needs to know these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't know things like what Travada is or they think it's an HIV medicine. They may approach it all completely different. So yeah. barriers that we as a society have to deal with. Yeah, it was definitely that situation where um, I saw, I, I think one of the first questions, and I, I know we've had this happen before, others have had this happen before, is um, when I mentioned it to one of the emergency doctors, because mm-hmm. I had an emergency issue, they they asked if I was HIV positive, I was like, no, I'm not, Like, but they heard the Truvada, they saw what it was meant for, and they were like, they wanted to ask if you're in like, I was like, no, I'm not. That's kind of the reason why I take this medication. But I yeah. was, it's I will own, I was probably not in the best of mental states at that time. <laughs> I, I advise everybody. It's really important to tell people that if they are going to disclose the medicine they're on, if they're saying they're on Travada, make sure they say Travada for prep. Don't just say mm-hmm. Travada. Travada yeah. for prep. It's really important. Good idea. That is a good idea, actually. Um, and then, yeah, I, um, want to say yes that's kind of what you were talking about with the prep navigator or something like that's kind of what's happening now mm-hmm. um i have changed um medical providers specifically to kind of help with this because a lot of stuff is being done through the agency that i'm um, the caracol agency which for many years did like um helping those with hiv and aids um, getting housing and and su- medical support they're now kind of expanded to becoming a a um prep um provider mm-hmm. and it's been really wonderful uh because literally like I, I will own this because literally last week because we were since we're talking about prep um i got my refill for my recent my third refill for my most recent um prescription of prep and the price went from zero copay to 882 dollars mm-hmm. for the copay and instead of like freaking out i contacted my um, person that I've been talking with at the Caracol and they were like, okay, thank you for letting me know. I will work on it and let you know what's going to, what needs to be done. And they literally, he emailed me and called me and told me everything was fine. And within a couple of days told me, Hey, like you can go in and it'll be $0. And I'm like, so it's awesome to kind of think of something like that. And that, that is something that needs to be done. But uh, again, like you said, most people probably don't know about that. Well, and one of the most unfortunate parts is like, Damon, like you and you, know, you and I and Jeff, like we're not the like population that like is the least unaware of what the resources are. Like we mm-hmm. we at least have some familiarity that these organizations, that these entities exist that we could at least try to reach out to. But even then, we're not that well knowledge. So those that are like in the most dire need. Um, Dyer might be a bit dramatic, but like those that have the most like significant need for mm-hmm. use of something like this as an impact, like don't have any awareness. And how do we yeah. get that information out there? So I think that's, you know, part of the whole reason I wanted to have both of you on is like, you know, talking from that perspective about the the community and advocacy you know, prospect. And I'm all the more proud, Mario, that we chose you because of your wealth of background. I didn't realize that you've been involved in dealing with this pretty much since um the beginning when it was uh introduced in that case so yay um (laughs) so you know i'm glad to hear david that you were able to get that sorted out and because the last we had kind of talked about the subject you were in that in-between period and you were like i don't know what i want to do like um and i had kind of like a lot of people that's a lot of people 
Oh. Well, and I and I kind of made reference to to Damon about something. I would appreciate if you and Kenny could kind of talk a little bit about this, like understanding that this isn't like you're not a prescriber, so this isn't really the wheelhouse. But there have been some discussions, and I believe studies done done in terms of like Truvada for prep being used instead of on a daily basis. That it has a different. Uh, I can't remember what the numbers thing is. That it's more yeah. like. Ex, uh, exposure incident kind of based um, in that case. And by that, I mean, it isn't that you know that you were with somebody who was HIV, but more precautionary. If you're not a person who's sexually active regularly, that you may like kind of dis, uh, make a decision, you know, that you would rather take it specifically if it's, you know, right. you, let's say you have sex like once every six months or something. Um, it's kind of a bit dramatic, but maybe true for some of us. <clears throat> so, so that 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 um that's called event dosing or two one one. It, it's it's more commonly known as two one one event dosing, um, where you plan sex if you can plan sex that is, uh, within twenty four hours to two hours before sex you take two Travada, and then twenty four hours later you take one more pill, and then twenty four hours after you take one more pill. So that that has proven quite effective. It was it was they actually did trials in France on uh, on two one one, and hmm. um, they showed it to be um, uh, effective. That n nobody in the trial um, contracted HIV, but the actual data, because of the number in the trial, uh, showed it to be eighty six percent effective, even though nobody became HIV positive during the trial. Um, so it it is approved approved. It elsewhere, but it is not FDA approved in America, and it's not prescribed for that use. Um, mm -hmm. However, there are there are people who, as you say, um, they you know they may be planning. They, they may not be sexually active, but they may be planning on going on a trip and being sexually active while on that trip. Um, in which case, I sometimes will recommend um, that um, for for cisgender male, um, we 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 understand that. It takes several days for the medicine to uh, to to get to maximum levels of the medication throughout your body. It takes about seven days for cisgender male. It takes about twenty days for cisgender female. Um, so we we understand those things. But so if a male is going away for and, and and wants to start prep seven days prior to you know going away and being active and then taking it during that and then maybe seven days when when the when the vacation is over while they're sexually active, that is one way of of being event dosing, um, that's a little bit different than the two one one. I'm not saying I don't recommend two one one. I think it works for some people, but the problem is that people who were on prep, people who have been on prep that have become HIV positive, was were mostly found that they didn't have enough medicine in their body to uh, to protect them. Um, mm. So so my my philosophy is if if you've got the pills, just take them. Um, you know, if they're not doing any medical harm to you, then then uh, just take the pills. You never know. Yeah. That's the thing with sex is you just can't plan sex. I, I, I just don't think that it's 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 safe to plan sex. What do you think, Kenny? Uh, no, it, it's hard to plan for it. So you might as well to be prepared prior so that you don't get into that circumstance where, you know, something bad. You're not protected. Yeah, and if always... it's, you, you could, if you did have sex with an individual and you thought that, um, there was a chance that you um, could have been exposed to it, and you can go to emergency care or ER and get that within 72 hours, and you can protect yourself that way as well. But being, pr being proactive in your health is, you know, a better plan than, you know, just going on a whim. Yeah, I've yeah. always found that, at least in my case, when I'm having sex, it's always a, like a I'm in the mood sort of thing. <laughs> So, yeah. So, if, well, if I had been, I, I personally, have, I'm probably the only one here who is not on prep. Um, but I, once I hopefully finally will within the next year, maybe, I don't know. Um, I, I'm hoping I'm going to be one of those things where I'm just going to do it just because I have no idea when the mood's going to strike me and I'm going to find someone and I'm going to play and everything. So. <laughs> Uh, it's it's one of those things where it's better to be prepared, for lack of a better yeah. word. Uh, well, you know, it, Boy Scout is armed. armed. Right. 
And I mean, that's one of the things that like my task force has been doing. We started a, a condom distribution program locally in which condoms are distributed in uh, nondescript brown paper bags. And they're put out at various businesses that choose to participate in the distribution program. But they're put in populations like in areas of need. And the concept is like you don't have to do anything. Like you don't have to say anything. If you know that they're there, you just go ahead and you grab a bag, you leave. Um, includes, you know, condoms, lube, some, you know, literature as well. And, you know, to date, we've distributed thousands of condoms through it, you know, and the state, you know, has granted us more money and appreciated like what we're doing with that. We did that because we were trying to find a way to like get something out there. And Mm -hmm. if, you know, as you're saying, Jeff, it's like you kind of don't know when something's going to happen. But if you happen to know that like the barbershop you go to or, you know, this little mom and pop store or something that you were able to pick up a bag, like the likelihood of you having condoms and condoms that have not expired increases right. greatly because of that availability. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, sex, sex should be fun. It, it really should. And, and we, sh- we shouldn't. We, we've as a society have, have, have stigmatized sex and made it shameful. And other, a lot of other countries don't do that. What, what PrEP does, it allows for the removal of the anxiety of contracting HIV. And that is really important because if we're identifying people that, that are at risk for HIV, um, you know, you can put people in boxes and say, you know, you do this activity that puts you at risk, you put these activities at risk. That's not going to make someone take a pill just because you're shaming them into, into believing that they, they, they need to be on it. I would mm-hmm. prefer to empower people about what the medicine can do for them and let them empower themselves to make that decision to remove that anxiety. I grew up in the 80s yeah. and 90s believing that I was going to get HIV and die from AIDS. I, that's, mm-hmm. that's the belief I had because of what we knew about HIV at the time. Um, that anxiety is gone. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm very proud to be able to say that that I don't have yeah. HIV anxiety. Yeah. I, I, on the flip of that, like, well, not a flip of that, but for me, the reason, like I talked about, like around World's Aid Day 2018 is when I started going down the route of getting, it was because I was hearing a lot of stories of people who were on PrEP and telling them, telling their stories about how, like now that I'm on it, I don't worry so much about getting it. It's no longer, you know, the deficit that's in, in, in things like that. And that really inspired if that's the right word, I think it inspired me to kind of like, this is something that's out there that's available to you. You know, I sound, I sound me, but I have insurance and I also have all these probably other options available for me that I could potentially get on prep and not maybe not have to spend as much on it or maybe not have to pay for it at all. And Mm -hmm. so far, you know, knock on wood, um, I've not had to spend other than paying when I was doing it through new RX, other than paying for the test, that's right. all I've, yeah, that's all I had to pay for since right. I start, since I have been on it, which is, I mean, I mean, it's a great thing for many. It's not always available, but it is a great idea and option available for people. Right. And one of the things I wanted to talk about, like, because Damon, you had brought up was like NewRx, it's N-U-R-X. It's a mobile platform that originally mm-hmm. started with women's contraception. And then they added uh, PrEP with Truvada for HIV, um, like, uh, testing. It wasn't about HIV testing explicitly, but that's what they're doing because the concept is if you're going to be prescribed or have made available to use Truvada for PrEP, you need to be HIV screened first. If you do mm-hmm. have HIV, then you're not going to get Truvada. You're actually going to go on to medicines for the PEP program because now you're actually been exposed. So mm-hmm. the concept is, is to use Truvada as that um, prophylaxis so that you don't end up uh, contracting HIV because it does a really good job at that and we don't want the virus to like end up getting the upper hand by overcoming that particular medicine if Mm -hmm. you weren't having it um but nurx is is a mobile app and the concept behind it i don't believe it's available in all 50 states but basically in at least every single state that they are active in they have a doctor that ends up becoming the prescriber and Mm -hmm. you end up going through the blood test and having that blood test sent in and then you go through the process of um, through that doctor being the one yeah. that uh, happens for your state. We talked about it and this past year at my event for Drench Fur because I know that our event, we have a number of people that come from rural areas rural and they don't feel areas. comfortable mm-hmm. talking to their primary care physician. Um, and they may not know if there's an infectious doctor like nearby or within a reasonable distance. So the concept of mobile medicine 
um, I think can be really huge in terms of what people can do. And this is just one example of that. Right. Yeah. Um, and I are, will say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, there are, go ahead. Apps that are, 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 are doing that now. Plush care, uh, does the same thing that Norex does, uh, with mobile apps. Um, and you're right. The mobile, the mobile areas are, are key. The only, the only downside to it is that when you come across issues, with uh, the copay assistance or you're charged all of a sudden the medicine's been free for a while and then all of a sudden you're charged for it because either you've got a hole between your deductible and your annual out of pocket that that the Gilead copay hasn't worked for, or has worked for and then stops um, then all of a sudden you have to pay for the medicine um, mm -hmm. and then you don't have to turn so people are stopping at that point whereas they, if yep. they knew how to contact a prep navigator they could get through that process right that's exactly what happened for me just you know, kind of the situation that happened for me, and it became a bear, no pun intended, because of, like I said, I had to get the prescription somehow in right. order for the other insurance and doctor's office to fill, or insurance and pharmacy to fill, and I had I found the prescription because they you know send you a copy of it, um, but the doctor was in like. California or maybe it wasn't the doctor it was like the the new rx people mm -hmm. so it just became this this big to do when i had um yeah it was a me it was a mess i don't want to keep going on it because it was it was it was a mess and the main reason it was a mess was because it was all of this stuff that is kind of so separate from you as opposed to like going to like a navigator or going to your doctor um and again i could have given up and i almost did uh, just because it was such a big like headache to deal with. Right, right, and it shouldn't. Um, be. These are all barriers that um, that everybody faces. Every single person will face a barrier, and whether they push through that or give up is is whether they stay on prep. And these barriers need to go away. We're at a point. Mm -hmm. We've had prep since 2012. We're we're seven years into this uh, uh, this protocol of HIV prevention, and we're still learning about it. There's something messed up about that. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's that's the way I've been feeling. I've been one of the most outspoken individuals on our um, task force about the very fact that I'm like, I think it's ridiculous that in today's day and age, like we know that there is a pill that has been proven to prevent contracting HIV. And yet we have poor like like outreach in terms of like education to the mass public of understanding that this thing exists, let alone like the the doctors and that like i started becoming the person that was advocating like i feel like we should just be reaching out to the base population and say to hell with the doctors because i feel like they were stonewalling in in our local area and i was like well then if you have to bring it to them then so be it or if we have to like figure out another way to get around it in that case mm -hmm. um get off my soapbox for a moment so <laughs> one of the things i wanted to talk well, about though uh was so there's this thing that's out there, which actually I haven't seen it for a little while, so it may be kind of going away uh, in terms of not a, not a hashtag campaign, but it's a describer sometimes used in profiles or in postings of uh, online hookup apps referred to as a prep whore. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to talk a little bit about like the concept of controversy versus sexual liberty. And to explain that, like the... There's been this ongoing issue, and I think it's mostly out of one organization based out of the state of California, I believe, um, where someone has been really kind of pushing back about how individuals taking PrEP are now more prone to bear back in their sex because not, not having the concern about contracting HIV has been equated, quote unquote, with like declining condom use because now you can, you know, not have a physical barrier, quote unquote, to having sex. And so well, you just fuck without a condom. However, we need to make sure that everyone's clearly aware that Truvada as, you know, prep, or in this case, the coming, you know, the new uh, medicine Discovy does not prevent anything else. So this does like, like that HIV is just one STI kits. Like there's a whole plethora of other things that are out there that you can uh, mm -hmm. get in contact with. And so condoms help prevent a couple of things, not just one thing. <laughs> well, there, there's a couple of things that I'd like to uh, touch on that. Okay. Sure. So um, 
PrEP works regardless of condom use for HIV. Okay, so the, you'll you'll see a lot of, of, of things saying that are, are, are agencies that will say uh, PrEP and condom use is the only way to prevent HIV. Okay, well that that that's actually not true because PrEP works regardless of condom use mm -hmm. in, in in that sense um, if it's taken as prescribed, obviously. Um, so what I want to talk about was um, the um, uh, oh gosh, I've lost it now. Um, we're, we're talking about, uh, could you just go back and just refresh my memory what, what, what your point was? About prep whores and how like people use it as like a, okay, a positive okay. indicator of being able to right. like bear back. So, so one, of the, one of the things that is the protocol for prep is that you have to get tested every three months for, H, for HIV. Mm -hmm. But you also, if you see, a, if you see a, a, a prescriber, you also have the opportunity to get tested for your SDIs every three months, depending on how much sexual activity you had. So you're going to have a sexual health conversation with your provider, and they're going to determine whether or not to do SDI screening with you or not. So if you if you are um, if you are testing positive for any STI, it's caught usually very very early in the process, uh, which is which is good. Um, people who work in in um, in certain health departments have major issues with prep. With with the lack of condom use uh, that they're seeing, and 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 they're they're trying to identify that prep is the is the cause for all these increases in STIs. We had like 1.6 million syphilis cases last year in the United States, but we've only 250,000 people on prep. So you, you can't you can't just place all of that on prep. More and more people are getting mm -hmm. tested. But one of the things I find with people that are on prep is that. Before prep, we used to jump in the sack and then have a conversation the next morning saying, uh, by the way, um, I, 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 you know, I, I think the condom stayed on all night or by the way, um, I hope you're not HIV positive or by the way, when was the last time you got tested? But people who are on prep are now starting to have a conversation before you jump in the sack saying, mm -hmm. hey, I'm on prep. What are, what are your, you know, prevention uh, strategies or when was the last time you were tested for STIs? So this conversation is happening and people are making better choices. And if they choose not to use condoms, I think that's that's perfectly fine. I mean, I, it's not in a in a health situation, but if you're having a proper conversation and you're and you're actually making good choices based on the conversation you have, you're certainly reducing the STIs, even if you're not preventing all of the STIs, you're certainly reducing them by having conversations. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the fact. I think it's, I, I, I hate to hold prep whore and because I think it's just, the, I honestly want to say it's a myth. Because to me, like, the people who were probably doing it beforehand, you know, with no, you know, no condom use and not caring are probably still going to do that. Like, most of the time, it's not to me mentally a changing of your mind. It is a, um, what are we looking for? I think for, like you said, like people are having those conversations ahead of time. They're mentioning it in their profiles, indicating that they are taking prep. They mentioned when their their last tests were. They're saying things along those lines so that people are knowledgeable before they have that conversation. So before I click that bear that I think is really hot, I can go, oh, I see things on his profile and, and people are talking about it more. I, I really do. I agree with that 100% that that is still definitely the thing. And um, I know for me, both when I was on NewRx and when I just joined with the Caracol group, I get I got tested for all STIs. Like the NewRx test is not just a blood test. It's also right. uh, a urine test, a, a, a throat swab, a um, anal swab. <laughs> yeah. You, they do all of those things. And you, you granted, you do it yourself. But um, um, and then you send it all in. So you get tested, you know, for everything. Or at least I was probably because when I announced that I was high risk for other things. So. And people, people who are empowered to take PrEP are also given the education to empower themselves about preventing the other STIs. So it's not like the knowledge is just thrown away there about, about condoms. Condom education is part of the PrEP education. And if I am a person that's taking PrEP because I'm worried about HIV, I'm also worried about the other STIs. So um, and, 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 and that message is conveyed to all of the people that I talk to and have consultations with about PrEP is that knowing, empowering them to make good decisions about their sexual health. That's the only thing that we can do. We can't condemn or call people a whore because they choose to have sex a way that's different from the way I see it. 
People have yeah. the right to enjoy sex the way they want to do it, okay? And they should have the right, and we should have the right to be able to enjoy it the way we want to have it, okay? So you empower yourself, and you make good choices with the people that you want to be with, and that's the best you can do. Mm-hmm. So prep A in, to the man. Prep in general is really for from the for, in the first time that I that I heard something about it. It always felt like it wasn't. Truvada was the drug that was being used, but it's not the full spectrum of what prep is. So prep is is not just about about taking this drug once a day, but also. Uh, taking other precautions to help prevent, which possibly in this case, talking about you know, condom usage and 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 other STIs and all all that, is always felt like that was just the whole part of prep for for me. I haven't really gone into a deep conversation with my doctor or anything about it, but um, that's it, it was like Truvada is just part of prep. It's not all uh-huh. of prep. It is, it is a tool in the toolkit for sexual health. Um, it is much more effective for blocking HIV than condoms are. Condoms are only 76% effective for men who have sex with men uh, because they break or they're not used properly or they, um, or they slip off. Um, so, in fact, condoms are not even FDA approved for HIV prevention. Only uh, Travada is and now Discovi for, for, for PrEP, which is over 99% effective at blocking HIV. So um, I, I, I don't care for the message too much that, um, that PrEP and condom use is the, is the proper protocol for HIV. It is the proper protocol for, for most of your sexual health, but you can, you can get an STI even when you use a condom. There are, you know, there's other areas of the, bo- of the body that you can get an STI that don't involve condom use. So, um, so it's not the end all, the be all end all, it's not. Um, so like I said, if it goes back to, um, if, if, you, if, you're, if, you under, if you have a partner, uh, here's, here's the thing, I, I, um, I know so many people who were in monogamous relationships that turned up HIV positive because they got blindsided, their partner stepped out and they became HIV positive. Um, whether you are at risk or you feel you're at risk or not, prep the actual pill, whether you're using condoms or not, the pill will remove the anxiety of you ever having to worry about that or being blindsided. Right. And, um, and that's why I recommend it to everybody that's sexually active. And then the condom mm-hmm. use then brings in an, a second discussion because we're talking HIV here. Um, the SDI portion of it is, you know, it's a factor and it's a, it's a problem, but when, when, when you've lived your whole life with an epidemic that has killed your friends and family, uh, this crap pill is a big deal. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's quite the turnaround from the 80s where there was no known concept of like what could be potentially a cure to moving into medicines that kind of um, made vast improvements in the general well-being of someone once they contracted HIV. And now we're on most, they kind of feel we're on the precipice of actually, you know, finding a cure. And Mm -hmm. at least Truvada and Descovy, you know, as medicines are giving us the ability to prepare ourselves to kind of stop HIV from spreading. And I agree with you, Mario. Like, it's one of the things that I get really itchy about, like, in discussion with our task force and, like, how we get this message out to the lay public about just because you're in a monogamous relationship does not mean you're safe. There's a – it's a presumption. But it's not really the case. That's like me not locking like my apartment front door and presuming no one's going to come in. Like, like because the door is a barrier, quote unquote. I think no one's going to come into my home. But that's mm-hmm. not necessarily true unless I take extra precautionary steps. If I put a deadbolt in, then at least I'm like making an attempt to prevent something from happening. And that's the part that I think frustrates me is that people have this notion that they are okay because they're in a monogamous relationship when in fact you may not be and you don't know that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to me, that would be a devastating way to find out um, Mm -hmm. after the fact to to discover that, you know, actually you've contracted something which, you know, Mm -hmm. you never expected to in that case. 
So one of the things, uh, Mario, you had done at, uh, I think it was the 2017 or 2018 North American Bear, you had done a series of workshops, yeah. I believe, that you had led and you had found out um, in terms of just like from personal interactions about prep uptake in the, the bear community, yeah. um, being that you've been working on this for, for so long. Um, anything you have to say about that, I'm sure. Yeah, would be so, so I had... I had a, a vendor booth at the at the at the at the North American Bear event in 2018, and I had uh, over 600 engagements. Now I know there were about 2,000 people at the conference, but about 600 people engaged me, and I asked questions. And one of the questions I asked was, "Were you on prep, or did you know anything about prep?" Um, and what I found was that over 300, I want to say 330 out of the 600 people I, I, I spoke to and had engagement with, over 330 were already on PrEP. And then the other 270 had at least heard of it. I only had about one or two people that had never heard of it, like it was the first thing that the first time they'd ever heard of the, the, the term PrEP. So when I did the workshops, um, we I did four workshops during NAB, which were one hour long each. And it wasn't really to teach people about what prep was because like I, I said most people were informed of the bear community which I found absolutely amazing because they are the most in my opinion informed uh, community in the in the LGBT community about prep um, and uh, what 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 we were really discussing is how do you overcome the barriers of when your insurance won't accept it or how do you overcome the barriers of finding a prescriber and all that sort of stuff. It was more of the barriers and of, uh, of over, over, overcoming those obstacles and staying on prep than it was actually being on prep or getting on prep. Mm -hmm. So I was, I, was, I was floored by how well informed the bear community is. Yeah. I mean, I, it's heartwarming to know that like as a, <laughs> as a, you know, part of the broader uh, gay male community, so to speak, that we have awareness. Um, but I think Mario, some of what you were talking about and all your years of involvement, you know, the apps having advertisements and, you know, pop-up messages and that kind of thing, like basically getting right into like the happening, so to speak, you know, it's kind of like, Oh, you're looking to get some dick before you do that. You should know, <laughs> <laughs> you right. know that there's this there's this thing out there that can help with this uh, part of what we're dealing with. And I, I, I use I use most of the apps. I, I have my Prep Daddy social media campaign, and I'm on most of the hookup apps. Now, obviously, you'd have to search for me in the Chattanooga area to find me. But when I go to other towns, I just have my profile there. My profile says, "Ask me about prep," and it gives me some of my credentials that I'm you know I'm a certified prep navigator. And um, the uh, people will will hit me up and and. And it's not, it used to be what is PrEP. And now it's not what is PrEP anymore, but can you help me find a provider in my area? And we have uh, some great resources now. We've got preplocator.org, mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, preplocator.com. Um, maybe it's com and org, um, which is a national website which will help you find a prescriber in your area. You put your zip code in, it'll tell you how far you are from a PrEP provider. Um, we have, a, in Tennessee, we're fortunate enough to have a statewide getpreptm.com dot com I believe and um, the uh, what's really good about our statewide one is it lists all the prep navigators we have about 15 prep navigators around the state and those are your real connections because they'll help you find the providers and they'll help you with the copays mm. so, so I definitely recommend that if anyone's thinking about going on prep is to find a prep navigator in your area and start there mm -hmm. you agree? So, what 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 should people, when they're looking to get onto prep, if they haven't already, uh, what is the process like to get onto prep? Like, what should we be expecting? So you should be expecting you have to. So the the, the number one question is, can I afford it? Can people want to know can they can they afford to get on prep? For for about ninety five percent, ninety six percent of the population, the medicines can be got for free. Um, even all insurance companies will cover it. It may be a high tier medication, but it, mm -hmm. it is covered by almost all um, insurance companies. Some insurance companies will apply the $7,200 copay assistance that Gilead provides towards their annual deductible and annual copay or annual out of pocket. Um, that's a really important factor because 
what happens is that the copay assistance is used before your insurance card is used um, to pay for the medicine. And then after the copay assistance gets applied to your out annual deductible, by the time you've had four or five script refills, your insurance then pays over at 100%. So that's that's the one way. Unless you've got a very high deductible that's more than seven thousand five hundred, you may fall into a hole where you get the medicine for free every every uh, uh, every month for about six months, and then all of a sudden you got to pay for the medicine until you meet your annual out of pocket. And that's where a navigator will come in to help you with other assistance. But the 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 uh, for someone going on prep, you need to know that you are going to have to go to you're going to have to give blood four times a year. You're going to have to either if you're using the phone app or you're using a, a, a provider, uh, you're going to have to go give blood four times a year. You will probably get checked for STIs um, at least twice a year, possibly more if you're having more sexual activity. Um, you are, before you start, you're going to have your uh, renal function, you're going to have your kidney function tested, uh, specifically with Trivada, because it is indicated that about one in 200 people will experience a, a lower kidney function over a period of time. Um, it was mostly seen with women in the clinical trials, but they're still going to check uh, because it has affected men as well. Uh, with the new medicine that's out, Descovy, Descovy was not indicated to have any issues with uh, kidney function at all. So, so there was there was uh, zero uh, side effects listed with Descovy with regard to kidney. So that's why a lot of providers are switching um, just to write a script now. They're going to write Descovy. However, Descovy is only indicated for cisgender males and transgender women. So uh, it was not tested in clinical trials for women. So women will have to stay on Trovada until the clinical trials for Descovy are, are matched with women. Um, so that, that's the difference between Descovy and Trovada right now. Descovy is a smaller pill. Um, it's a little bit easier to swallow. Um, and um, um, it, But it has the same efficacy of, of preventing HIV. It's over 99% just like Trovada is. Um, there's, mm -hmm different formulas, um, but they do the same thing. They, they block the, uh, the virus from getting into your um, CD4 T cells, which are your immune system cells. HIV has to get into your cells to reproduce for you to become HIV positive. These medicines are able to prevent this HIV from getting into the cells. Therefore, the HIV dies in your body over a small period of time. As it so happens, I have a prop. I have a, a handy... <laughs> card here for people oh. to take a look at to show the difference between the two pills. Yeah. Uh, the larger, darker blue of the two happens to be the Truvada. This is a placebo. Everybody calm down. And then the smaller, lighter blue one is the the Discovy in this case. Um, this was actually at our World AIDS Day uh, function recently. They had these lovely cards um, mm -hmm. explaining about that there was these two different programs and the Gilead copay. So I snagged one because I was like, that's a handy, like, you know, uh, <laughs> reference device. So, um, yeah. yeah. So as, go ahead, Damon. Oh, and as I mentioned, like my doctor is talking to me about potentially putting me on Descovy, um, just because of the, um, lower risk of the kidneys. When I did my blood test a few, a month or two ago, um, there were some issues with my kidney functions. There were some, it, there were some levels that were elevated and they, I ended up having to do another blood test the last time I was at my doctor to kind of figure out if it's the kidneys or if it was just a um, issue with the, when they did the blood test. Um, mm -hmm. So once they find that out, there's going to be a discussion, but she had already, she gave me the literature. I actually have it in my um, office. Um, it is like, like they were saying, it is literally not really the same medication, but is a different, you know, dosage of the medication and, um, you know, I, she gave it to me for, to like, think about, but she's not going to take me off immediately off Shivada until like, I think this was now my third, um, my third month refill that I got recently. So she's thinking about like talking about it after that's done. So some people are running into issues with, uh, insurance, not allowing the doctor to switch the medication without a medical reason. Um, so mm. Trivada is becoming generic in September of 2020. Mm -hmm. So if you're on Trivada, your insurance company will want you to remain on Trivada so they don't have to pay 1500 bucks a month for it. Mm. 
So, mm. uh, so doctors that are, are switching people that are already on to Dravada to Discovy are starting to get fee- uh, pushback from insurance companies that, saying that um, we want a medical reason why you want to stay on Discovy because Discovy won't be going generic for at least another five years. So, mm-hmm. uh, so um, that's one thing to consider um, for, for consumers whether or not, because Travada, Travada, generic Travada may be uh, a, a better option for someone that, than having to go through the insurance issue process. So it may right. become easier for people. So um, there's a lot of things to be juggled up about, and that's why really um, dealing with agencies that know what they're talking about with regard to the medicines and the copays and the insurance and all that sort of stuff, I wish these barriers were not there because it puts people off going on PrEP. It really does. It's like... Why is it worth this effort? But it really is worth the effort. And if you you really want to empower yourself, be that person, do your research, get get the people in the know on your side and get them to work for you. And then it becomes Mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. I will I will like testify to that to my dying day. Um, because that was literally what happened with me. Like I I didn't know much and I didn't you know, and I wanted to know more. So I got more education on it and going with the right people. Now I feel like I'm in a good place to where I don't have to worry about this. If that makes sense. Like I don't feel I will have to worry about this for a while, Mm -hmm. if at all. The Mm -hmm. only thing now I'll probably have to worry about is if as you mentioned now, if the possibility due to my personal medical issues I may have to switch over to Descovy, which could potentially be another issue. But I'm in a place where I would have the right people to provide the correct and knowledge. Well, and well you should be assured that Descovy is a perfectly safe medicine. It's it's oh. it, it's it, mm-hmm. there's 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 no difference. It's safer for you with your kidney issues than the Travada would be. So you yeah. should be assured that that's not really a problem for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think yeah, the medical think, hmm? it'll be fine. Yeah. I may have the medical reason right? For, so that there's no issue with my insurance. <laughs> right. And we'll have the link in our uh, show notes for everybody. It's simply preplocator.org is the website that you can yeah. basically go in and put in your zip code and then you can uh, find out who the uh, providers are in your area, like who you can reach out to, whether it uh, be an entity or possibly a, a navigator in that case. Um, Kenny, I wanted to talk to you about like when you had your your title gear, if I recall correctly, like that was kind of one of the things about your your platform um, in regards to like with North American Bear. Uh, what was it like in that year of your title and traveling around, you know, as uh, the title individual like i don't recall offhand if nab has specific requirements of you in the specific year other than to be you know a good advocate on behalf of the the title for the community but uh and correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that that was one of the things that you wanted to you know focus on in the coming year or your title year i should say uh yes so as far as my title year goes um it was over sexual health and empowering people um and um, as far as traveling goes, we went to a lot of different places. Um, it's probably the most traveling I've ever done in my life. Um, it, it was kind of a struggle because I really didn't know anything about holding a title or like, you know, getting pinned. He was a and, baby panda. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was a little naive panda. So um, it was most definitely a learning experience. I would most definitely do have done things differently if I, you know, had done that again. Um, but um, you know, we paid out of pocket for everything. We did uh, the best that we could to roommate with people um, to cut down on costs. Um, but we tried to travel to everywhere we went. Um, we we took our car because we're very weird people and we like to have our vehicle there and you know <laughs> people for rides and things like that. So. Most most of the places that we went to were within driving distance um, around Tennessee. Um, it was a, a pretty good year. Um, about halfway through it, though, uh, my partner he lost his his father, so it was kind of rough for us for a few mm-hmm. months. We had to take a little break towards the end of the title year, mm-hmm. uh, take care of ourselves. And um, but uh, as far as the title title year goes, I mean, I, I learned a lot um, at the same time. I was also going through some changes with the community, being a part of the community, being part of 
the community planning group, um, MSM Task Force, the World's AIDS, uh, World's AIDS Day uh, Planning Committee. Um, we, for World AIDS Day, um, I pretty much took hold of a lot of uh, the events, uh, this, the later part of the events. Um, we had a thing, we had a, um, an art gallery uh, with some artists um, uh, going over um, HIV and living with it through the years. We had a, a remembrance and then uh, we had pop-up project, which is here in Chattanooga. Um, they were a part of that as well. We did, um, we did a piece about HIV and then we had an event at a, it was originally our, one of the first uh, gay clubs here. It's called the Imus Pint, but it used to be at what's called Allen Gold's, which is our local um, gay bar here. Um, but we had a World AIDS Day, um, pretty much like drag show. And it was it was dancing and it was wild. It was great. And then we finished the night out at this place called Flavorless. It's an EDM dance party in an abandoned warehouse. Um, and we finished the night till like three o'clock in the morning. Um, it was it was quite uh, quite an undertaking to take up two different events in one day and try mm -hmm. to set up everything, set up the show and everything. So. When the show was over at the Honest Pine, I was getting trashed <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, yeah, I'm ready for a break. And, some drinks. and then poor decisions. Yeah, then poor decisions. They actually, had to, my partner had to carry me out of Flavorless. Oh, oh wow. No. Yes, I was like so <laughs> on edge. I was so on edge like during the day, just like making sure everything was running right. And there was like... There's issues. I had to like drive home and find audio cords and bring them back and stuff like that. It was just oh strange. yeah. When it was over, I was I was like, I'm gonna have a good time and like, take care. I'm of He did great. He did great. He's great. Yeah, thank and you. And we love having hey. the SM Task Force because he brings something that I don't have, which is youth. And, <laughs> and and it's really important to get the message up because you know uh, you know the the you know the. The 13 to 24 year olds are are most at risk for HIV right now, and they're the hardest to reach for education about this. So the best way to reach them is their parents, believe it or not. But mm -hmm. um, but you know having someone that's at least if he isn't in his 20s, he at least looks like he is. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that that makes a big difference, you know, when when uh, when trying to reach people is uh, is looking like the people you're trying to reach. A yeah, little bit. I think the biggest issue is trying to get the younger generation involved in their education. Mm -hmm. And it's also tough, too, because their parents aren't comfortable talking about sex. These kids want to talk about sex. They want to be open. They want to be, you know, everything. And so I, I think it's yeah. a directional thing for the younger generation. I think like they, they can take hold, but it's teaching them how to direct and how to, you know, create what we need to get over these barriers. And there's another barrier, mm -hmm. is that some youth or adolescents are on their parents' health insurance, and they don't want to go on PrEP because they don't want their parents to find out that they're on PrEP, or they don't want their parents to find out that they're gay, so that they, mm -hmm. you know, so that there's another barrier, is, is they, they want to get on PrEP, and then all of a sudden, oh, but I don't want to use my insurance. Well, you have to use your insurance. If if you have it, you have to, because uh, the, the, the manufacturer will find out that you, that you have insurance. So you have to use it. So there's another barrier that's been raised. Like, how do we how do we get around that? And again, it follows very similar to the birth control pill. An adolescent girl can get on birth control pill without the parent's consent. Um, so that approach has to be applied for PrEP also. And it is in a lot of cases. But again, people have to know about it. Yeah. And now you've hmm. got a video. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Um, in terms of like wrapping up, was there anything, Kenny or Mario, that you wanted to hit on that we hadn't discussed so far in terms of discussing prep and Trabata, Discovery, and anything else related to that? Yeah, no, I think I think I think everybody's had input on this because we've all had personal journeys with this, and um, my my I think my the biggest takeaway that people need to get from this is. You need to figure out, you as in the person listening, needs to figure out what your anxiety level is surrounding HIV. And you need to have a, a coming to Jesus about this in the sense of, do you re are you really concerned about HIV? If you're not, that's perfectly fine. You may have a good reason for not being concerned. Maybe you're not sexually active um, or maybe you're not because you're just naive and maybe you should be. 
Um, mm. But a lot of people don't fear HIV like we did in the 80s and 90s because HIV diagnosis back then was a death sentence. So people don't fear it anymore, but it is to be feared. HIV is, a, is, is something that will mess you up. And, um, and I think people need to take a, 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 a deep, deep thought as to what, uh, what HIV means to them. And if they have an opportunity to prevent that for them, then they need to take it seriously and can cer certainly consider going on, on PrEP. It's certainly a consideration that people need to. Th and then knowing that the barriers that they think are out there are really not out there if you know the right people and you can get connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a uh, movie uh, that I suggest if you, it's some people I haven't seen and haven't been around back in the uh, our early 80s. Uh, you might want to check out Lifetime Companion, mm -hmm. uh, which came out in 1989, which is a really strong story uh about a bunch of uh, uh gay men uh, the description is the emergence and devastation of the aids epidemic is chronicled in the lives of several gay men living during the 1980s uh i, I watched it during uh, back when cll movies was around and i did a basically a gay movie challenge or watching one gay movie for every day during gay pride month was that the one with eight I'm sorry? Aiden Quinn, did he star in that? Aiden Quinn, no. No, that wasn't Aiden Quinn? Okay. Uh, uh, Campbell Scott, Patrick Cassidy, John Dessett, uh, Mary Louise Parker was in there, Stephen Caffrey. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a really great movie. It's an older movie, so if you're used to modern day movies, it's a little more... Uh, rough around the edges <laughs> but um but i think it's a really good and i think it really kind of shows how well nowadays because of things like prep and uh modern medical miracles it hasn't really been a concern it was a concern and you have to realize that you can't just be lackadaisical nowadays um we we need to to keep up the persistence and and make sure that where our current state stays as it is, if not improves much more, um, with things like prep. So we have a we have a formula to end the epidemic: mm -hmm. U equals U, undetectable equals untransmissible, plus prep will end the epidemic. The only way that we can do that is for everyone to know their HIV status. Mm -hmm. Undetectable equals untransmissible, for those who don't know, is if you're HIV positive and on your antiretroviral treatment and have achieved viral suppression, you cannot transmit HIV sexually to, to your partner. So if, if, if we have a 92% viral suppression rate, as we do in our area, the new positives are not coming from people who are HIV positive and know their status. They're coming from people who don't know their status. So knowing your status is key. And, and then being on PrEP is the other half of that formula. So uh, we do have the formula to end the epidemic, but everybody needs to get tested and know their status. We're not out of it yet. Hey, guess what, folks? Hate to say it. That's yep. it. Oh. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Plenty of ways to contact us. Uh, ask your, send us your questions in regards to anything that you would have here. Uh, that's not the right document. Um, you can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com, or we'll have a link to the Prep Locator website. I uh, did a quick search around my area, and there's tons of places in the Austin area um, uh, for Prep Locators. Uh, that's at comesoutloud.com. You can shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us on various social media outlets at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and of course in YouTube. And I need Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Oh, um, tight. Tight. <laughs> I told you it was best. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, join our uh, entourage chat 
uh, where uh, if you are a voyeur, there's uh, uh, certainly some exhibitionists out there that are on there. <laughs> At tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can also subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're planning on um, recording these at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various Cubs Out Loud merchandise, such as this Cubs Out Loud sweatshirt or a Consent is My Foreplay shirt, just examples, uh, at uh, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Come a Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can read us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcast, and also on Spotify. Um, you can find me anywhere in the internet. It says box at box, be box cub, box something or other. That's a lot. Um, I am, yeah, I am Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. If you want to follow me on Twitter, because I abandoned Tumblr, and you want to see the Donny Dottie stuff, it's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3-X-X-X. And don't get it twisted, Kenny. It's not my triple X. It's the stuff I like this triple X on Twitter. Just so you know. <laughs> and I saw that head cock. You were like, wait, what? Um so, uh, Kenny and Mario, if anybody wants to get in touch with you with follow-up questions, uh, praise you for coming on the show and all of your uh, knowledge and taking time with us, how would they do so? Delighted to be here. Uh, look for Prep Daddy on social media. Um, I've got a nice little logo, a little cartoon character. That's me, by the way. Prep Daddy. <laughs> um, uh, you can uh, find me at... Um, um, well, yeah, Prep Daddy on social media, but uh, my email address is mgf, which are my initials, mgfintn uh, at gmail.com. And to get a hold of me, you can find me on Facebook as Alika Kiavakani. Good luck spelling that A L I K A K E A W E K A N E. And uh, on Instagram as K A Kiavakani, K A K E A W E K A N E. That's a lot of K's. It is. Woo! <laughs> 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 Good, Good luck. Good luck, y'all. Or Good night. Night. Mario Forte on Facebook. Before, <laughs> before we say goodnight, uh, Gary, did you want to do a drawing or should we keep going? Uh, we could do the drawing if you have the... We have like... two names. Okay. So, because we have guests and they don't know anything of what we're talking about, this is completely the fair way to do this. Um, <laughs> so we were talking about how we have a Zazzle store online, so uh, my apologies to Mario and Kenny for, like, um, springing this on you, but we have various items of merchandise with our logo on it, in that case, and we happen to have a... A uh, wine op opener corkscrew that we are going to give away to a lucky person who submitted an email as instructed, and they were told to tell Cubs out loud that they want to get screwed by us. Okay. Because you know so it's a have... corkscrew. <laughs> so between the two of you, you have to consensually decide number one or number two, and then Jeff will reveal who the the person is that's going to get a corkscrew mailed to them. Once they get it pulled out. <laughs> Bear with us. One moment. Uh-oh. Uh, is, what is this? Rush okay. and Bo? Okay. They're like... Okay. Two. 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 Congratulations, Owen. Yay! Yay! Uh, so, so uh, someone in Hawaii will be getting this question. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kenny didn't even know that Owen's in Hawaii, so that's even they better. Had, they had no idea who it was. And he can spell Alika Kiavakani. Right. <laughs> Maybe. Uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> we decided that for this holiday season, we were going to give away something. And uh, so we decided to have him email us and tell us that they want to be screwed. Although I will say that one of them did say, how did they phrase it, Jeff? Something about... I want to be slowly screwed. Uh, yeah, the other entrant said, uh, I want to be slowly screwed by Cubs Out Loud, then hard and fast. Yeah, they got a little creative with it, so we appreciated that. Um, in that case, so thank you for helping participate in the, the wrap-up there uh, for that. Um, so yeah. we're going to go post-show now. Uh, Yay! And, and, and thanks to... Uh, thanks to me actually putting a couple updates in our Telegram chat to say, hey, guys, <laughs> we just got one. 
I don't have any others. <laughs> this might be my default. <laughs> but blah, blah. Blah. It's all good. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah. Happy holidays. And yeah. with that, say good night, everybody. Uh, where's my good night, everybody. Just in time because my laptop's about to die. <laughs> <laughs> we, we close the laptop if you can hear us. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I, I can't turn the laptop off, but, but the battery's about to run out, so oh. uh, I'm going to say good night. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Good night. Thanks Thank for joining us. Thank you guys so much. Us. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll be in touch, Mario. Appreciate it, guys. You have a good night, and uh, go enjoy the movie. All right. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait. They can't see me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said goodbye, so I suppose that's. I know I said goodbye, but I was like waving too. So. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. It's okay. okay. Oh, that's the difference. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, you know. And for those that were uh, interested, um, the movie that. Uh, Mario was referencing is called An Early Frost. It was released in 1985. It's a drama about a young lawyer that hasn't told his parents about his homosexuality and now he must tell them at a time when the diagnosis was still a death sentence that he has AIDS. So that was mm. the movie with um, uh, uh, yes, Aiden uh, Quinn. So that's who he was referencing. An Early Frost? Yeah. Huh. So but it reminds me of a play, but I don't think it's the. It can't be the same. No, it's different. Never mind. Hold on. So, yay! I'm glad we got to have both Kenny and uh, Mario yeah. on. So. How do I stop? How do I stop the broadcast? It's, I've, I've turned everything off on my computer, but I'm still hearing y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, I'm hang, hang up, up the call. <laughs> yeah, but hang up from Skype? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Duh. Where's my Skype? There we go. Okay. All right. See you guys. Thanks. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Good night. Bye. I could also kick you off the call, but no. <laughs> Ow. God just kick you off. Like, but, that was but, hysterical. I'm like... 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 <laughs> Poor Mario's like... My laptop keeps speaking. Why won't the go away? <laughs> Why won't <it> go away? <laughs> I'm over with this dang show. I want to go see Star Wars. Like, <laughs> <shut up. laughs> <clears throat> Too uh, funny. Yeah. Well, it's always fun having people on. It yeah. is. I was quite uh, happy about that that we could bring that together. So. People can get more informed. Agreed. Mm -hmm.